Hello everybody, my name is Joe Braymeyer. I'm the owner of Treadmill Heroes Fitness Equipment, Repair, Sales, Delivery and Moves. Today I want to go through a few pointers on what to absolutely look for before you buy a used treadmill. Whether it be from us or a private party or anywhere else, there's a couple tips that you guys need to know before you spend your hard earned cash on a used treadmill. So here we go. First thing you need to do before you buy a used treadmill, you're going to have to get your hands a little dirty. Right down here, this is called the running belt. There's two types of belts on a treadmill. A running belt, which is the big surface that you actually run on, and underneath the motor hood here is the drive belt. That's the poly V belt that goes from the motor to this front roller up here that then makes the running belt move. You have to inspect the relationship between the running belt and the deck. That's the hard surface right underneath of the running belt. This is actually a basically a piece of wood with a it's like a millimeter surface which basically it's like a kind of a slick really thin plastic coating which allows the the running belt to move smoothly across the deck. So your feet are planted right in this area here on the running belt when you run on the treadmill. That's where all the friction is, that's where the heat buildup is, and that's ultimately what creates issues with your treadmill. You need to take your hand and you need to go underneath the running belt and you need to feel the top side of that deck. That should be nice and smooth. If you feel a bunch of grooves in the deck, well, that means that the belt is starting to wear out and it's eating away at that slick surface that's on top of the wood deck. As it wears through that slick surface, what happens is, is the belt starts to catch on that deck. In turn, creating friction, creating heat, and heat is what destroys a treadmill. So get your hand underneath of that belt, feel the deck surface, and make sure that it's nice and smooth, especially where your feet are planted. It's usually always gonna be smooth back here on the back of the deck because really there's no impact and drag there. Your feet are coming up off the belt and hitting here. If you feel some grooves, that can be an issue. Also inspect the bottom of the belt. When a belt is brand new, usually they're nice and white like this. Uh, they have a cotton backing usually on the back of them to allow it to glide smoothly. As it ages, these get very, very dirty underneath of here. And they'll, because they accumulate dust and dirt and grime and all that other things which don't allow the belt to move nice and smooth. If you feel some grooves on the deck, be aware you're probably going to need a new running belt and deck. You can't just replace the deck because the belt has already been worn as well. These belts wear from the bottom up. Keep that in mind. These belts do not wear from the top down. So you might look at a running belt and go, oh, it looks fine. It's the underneath part that matters. Now I'm going to show you what a worn out deck looks like. So this is a used treadmill deck. This is there again, the hardwood surface that's underneath your running belt. Right here is exactly what I'm talking about. This is where your feet were planted, and that's where all the friction is built up. And it has worn through this nice slick black surface here, and you're already down to the wood. So every time the, the belt rubs on this, it's basically eating through the belt, creating hit friction, creating heat. This is bad news. If this does not get replaced, well, what happens is the drive motor in the treadmill has to work harder because there's more friction there. Because the drive motor has to work harder, that heats up. But it also commands more power out of the circuit board that's next to the motor that feeds power to it. And the circuit board pulls more power out of the wall. At some point, something's going to pop. So the second thing you need to check before you buy a used treadmill is the incline feature. Everybody knows a treadmill you can adjust the speed to make the running belt go faster or slower. But a lot of people, believe it or not, never use the incline feature. That's what adjusts the pitch of the front of the treadmill to make it go up or down to simulate walking up a hill. So what you're going to want to do before you actually buy that used tread, get on the thing and test it out. In this case, I'm looking at a used lifespan treadmill that we have for sale. I'm going to hit the start button. And I'm going to speed it up. 
But over here is where it says incline. I'm going to elevate this up to make sure that this tread goes all the way up, which we can hear it going up right now. And you can actually see it going up. And then we'll lower it back down to make sure that it goes down properly. There again, there are a lot of people who never use that feature. So if you don't test it, you don't know if it works. If a lift motor just sits dormant and is not used for years on end, it can seize up. Or there can just be a short in that lift motor that the previous owner knew nothing about. You didn't test it, you get the thing home, you go to do the elevation and it doesn't work. Now you're in kind of a weird spot. So make sure to check the lift motor functions on your used treadmill. So while we're in the zone of actually testing all the functions of the treadmill, it's vital that you check the buttons on the console and check all of them. Come on in and I'll explain why. So on most, especially residential grade treadmills, you have, this is nothing more than a fancy sticker here, but underneath of this sticker, is a membrane which basically ties all of these buttons together which goes through a ribbon and communicates up to the main console board here. All of these buttons typically will give you either a beep or some kind of indication that uh, you've actually pressed the button. So you need to press each button and make sure that it signifies that it knows that you pressed it. So I just go through the buttons here Press them all, make sure that they are beeping, and then I'll do the quick start button last. And then off we go. I also have some toggle keys here on the handlebars. Now you might think that, oh, if I press the eight button on the lift feature, Maybe I don't necessarily need that eight button, so it's no big deal. The problem is once one button starts to go, they all start to go. And since all of these buttons are tied together through one big membrane system, if one button is bad, like I said, the other ones are quick to follow. So just be aware of that. That will need to be replaced. These keypad overlays and membranes can typically be replaced relatively inexpensively, but you want to make sure that you checked all of that before you actually get the thing home. And speaking of buttons, if you press a button and it beeps, that means the brain of the treadmill knows you pressed it. If the treadmill does not do the function that you asked it to do by pressing that button, then you know something else is wrong with the unit. It's not the button. If the button beeped, the treadmill knows you pressed it. The button's fine. You probably have a more major component that is going to need to be replaced on the treadmill. I wouldn't recommend buying a commercial grade treadmill directly from a health club or a gym or a community center. And let me kind of explain what I mean by that. Buying a commercial grade treadmill from your home is usually a great bet and it will usually last you many years. But if you take a unit directly from a busy health club or a community center and just take it right home, you could be in store for some pretty expensive repairs. So you need to know that ahead of time going into it. Let's face it, a health club, for example, if you have a relatively new treadmill and it's in perfect working order, why would they get rid of it anyway? Usually health clubs and community centers and commercial facilities like that, they will get rid of their old units after they've already been beaten to death and it's time that they upgrade. So, replacing a lot of the drive system components usually needs to happen when those come out of there. Remember that deck I showed you that's worn through? Usually you see that all the time in used commercial treadmills uh, that come out of a club. So, still a good investment if you can get it bought cheap enough, just knowing you're probably going to have to put a running belt on it, probably going to have to put a deck on it, and a drive belt, 
and a few other small items just to make sure that the drive system is in good shape and you're up and running for a long time with a commercial grade unit. And here's a red flag for you. Never buy a used treadmill from a place or a person or whatever that's already been taken apart before you got there. You have to test it. And hopefully the previous points that I've made have proven that. But the old it ran when we parked it bit, that does not apply to treadmills. There is many cases where a consumer tries to move their treadmill and they accidentally damage a power wire, a network data wire that runs up and down the, the neck that communicates the electronics. They may even damage an electronic port where the cord plugs in and they don't even realize it because they took it apart, they moved it, and there it sits in the garage ready for you to take it home and now it becomes your problem. So if you can't test a used treadmill at somebody's house or facility, don't buy it. You just don't know what you're getting into. A common question we get asked is how old is the treadmill? To a certain degree, age really doesn't matter on a used treadmill. It's more how much has it been used. The question that you really should be asking yourself is, are parts still available for this unit? Because let's face it, a lot of fitness equipment at people's homes gets used sporadically or seasonally. When the weather's really nice outside, people are usually outside, busy doing other things. Uh, and the treadmill may just sit down in the basement and not get used for months on end. So the age of the treadmill, it comes into a factor, but not really. Here's what you need to do. The seller should easily be able to send you a picture of the model and serial number sticker on the unit. You can call any manufacturer and relatively quickly get an answer as to are parts still available for this. Most parts are not universal. They can't go from one unit to the next. They're unique for each individual model uh, of treadmills or ellipticals or bikes or anything for that matter. So find out, are parts still available for the unit? If so, well, then you know if something goes wrong, you can get the thing fixed. And a couple last minute tips. One, warranties do not transfer from one owner to the next, no matter what. Don't believe me? While you're on the phone with the manufacturer, seeing if the parts are still available, ask them if the warranty will transfer for, to you if you buy a used treadmill from the consumer if they bought it new. It will not. Also, most residential grade treadmills are made overseas. It's just the world we live in. So if you're planning on taking that treadmill apart and moving it, plan on bringing metric Allen wrenches. A lot of the bolts that they use to hold these together are not exactly hardened steel. So the bolt heads can round out very easy if you use the wrong size Allen wrench and that turns into a nightmare. So you don't want to burn up a whole Sunday drilling out bolts. Bring metric and standard size Allen wrenches with you just in case. Oh, and don't forget, when you load the treadmill up into your truck or on the back of a trailer to move it across town and get it to your place, remove the safety key. These things will easily blow off the back of the truck into the middle of the interstate and you'll never get it back. And then you're going to have to be calling us to get a safety key. And remember, no matter where you buy your treadmill from, whether it be us or a private party, we're here to help. Remember, we're a service company first, so don't hesitate to reach out to us at treadhero.com or pick up the phone and give us a ring at 563-723-3737. And remember, no matter what you do, don't buy from a greasy salesman. Buy from a greasy service technician.